Hi, Genki Call here with your Soul Forge offerings for the week of August 15th, 2022. Haven't looked in here yet, don't know what we've got, but I'm gonna find out. Wait, let me check this. Okay, I'm looking for Centurion, and he's not here. Bummer. All right. So, for Legendary... Well, I'm going to have to skip around in here because I can afford a Mythic. Yay! All right. For Legendaries, we have Carnex, who is a pretty good mana generator. Um, create five skulls, then explode ten, and gains 60 armor. So, he makes a nice tank. He, um, he reduces damage by 25%, but he's gaining a bunch of armor. And he also... Um, basically, this is a reflect. He reflects... Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. He adds 25% of armor to skull damage. So this is kind of like Tina, but weaker as far as this part goes. So um, I like this troop. Um, if you're using Mechanist class, it will have an 8 mana cost to start off with instead of 15. Otherwise, it's pretty spendy. But would I use 800 diamonds on it? No, I absolutely would not. Um wait till you pull it randomly he's just not used that often garnock also not something to spend 800 di um 800 diamonds on the thing is he does give all orc allies a 50 percent mana start but how often do you use an all orc team that you would need this for he does one true damage to all allies that's yes that's you create seven red and seven brown gems and um with a boost, you know, for each ally, you can get an additional four, and then summon an oak troop, or oak, it's an oak troop, orc, <sighs> blooper for the day, <sighs> Six, 800 diamonds, no, I absolutely would not recommend that, Onknum is one I really like, especially for delving, he does have a 25% chance to curse a random enemy when the turn begins, I'd like it better if it was on match fours, or higher percentage chance but um he does deal damage to all enemies boosted by cursed enemies so you can get an additional eight damage per enemy if they're all cursed and for every cursed enemy give a barrier to a random ally and that is where it really helps so if you're running with something that passively curses like even matron valen you know you don't have to have vash dagon or um Kurandara to to curse. You can use um, Indrajit also randomly curses, Matron Valen. So running with one of those can actually be really nice for your team um, to get that barrier damage to all enemies. I especially like to use him in Delves. But again, 800 diamonds that you could be spending on something else. I would not say it's worth it. And lastly, for the legendaries, we have Tannenbaum. Love this troop. If you didn't get it at Christmas time, he's pretty awesome. He does damage to an enemy, entangles them, pulls them to the front, and then he does triple skull damage to them if they're entangled. <gasps> and he's impervious. Very nice. And he has a little bit of skull damage reduction. So I really love this guy for running with entanglers and uh, or and or um, my mind. What is the class? Elementalist class. <laughs> and he's an elemental. Ooh. Um, he's great. I love him. But again, I wouldn't spend 800 diamonds on him. As far as all of these legendaries go, I would not recommend any of them unless you've got to have them for your power level or you're dying to use them in a specific team. All right. Let's switch out to the mythics. Gargantor is totally useless. But I want him. I want him so I, that I can get... I'm mythic blocked in Groshnak. So I may come back and craft him later. I'm not missing a ton of, of mythics at this point. And, you know, it's a chance to get my power level up there. So I'm going to think about it. He does damage to an enemy boosted by all allies and enemies killed with a times 15 boost ratio. So, I mean, he can he can do quite a bit of damage all at once. If everything's dead, <laughs> then you have no mana gen, and, you know, it, he's considered to be one of the worst mythics in the team, uh, in the game, but I also have some ideas for him, so that's another reason I want him. We'll see. He is impervious. He gets eight 
attack and magic when he takes damage. That's damage to his life, not to his armor. So he has to be having true damage done to him, like um, a true damage team or bleed or poison in order for him to get that bonus. So actually getting po poison on him would help immensely because every single turn you would be getting eight attack and magic. That's nice. Uh, because every time your magic goes up, this purple number goes up. So anyway, he's considered awful. I don't recommend crafting him. However, Shibano Vespera, ho, ho, ho. Shibano is awesome. Now, I have a Mythic Spotlight on her. I will add a... Um, I'll add a thumbnail at the end of this video for Shibano because Shibano rocks. She tends to be very slow, but very effective. And you can absolutely loop to death. You want to put her... Well, I go over how to use her in my video, so I won't go over that now. But she's amazing. Plus, eh, the summons is actually detrimental because the djinn will mana block her a little bit. But... Um, this is what's really awesome. So take a look at the at the Mythic Spotlight to see why I say that she is awesome because she really is. Um, so yeah, I would recommend her if you don't have her and you are and or you are Mythic blocked at Drifting Sands. Leona's Tower is always here. The Archduke. The thing about the Archduke that is really nice, he gains three magic at the start of every turn. And that is where this troop really goes way ahead of Consort of Darkness. Because it's the same thing. Um, you have a percentage chance equal to the magic to, to insta-kill. But the magic is going up every single turn. So... It goes up really quickly, surprisingly quickly, and you stick him in a delve where your magic is boosted, and he can be as good as Zulgoth in there, but you don't have to worry about the skulls backfiring. And he's especially useful on a team with Scorpius, who is going to give all brown allies plus one magic every turn. So, yeah, I like him. I like him, I do. Um, always here, always here. Astral Mother, I think, is the last one here that's not always here. Yep, Astral Mother is the last one. She's not really amazing because she doesn't loop. She removes all gems of a chosen color. That's great if you want to deny a certain color to your enemies. But you don't get any mana out of it, so your chances of looping are reduced. You can try to manipulate things so that when you remove the gems you're going to end up with a match four out of it so that you can loop it's just hard to do because those opportunities don't show up very often she does do true damage but it's scatter damage which is not a lot of damage it is boosted by the gems removed times five it's still it still doesn't add up that much. Queen Beatrix is still going to do more damage than she does, and she loops. Venoxia is going to do more damage than she does, and she loops. She does not. Um, she does get have a 40% to give Reflect to a random ally when the turn begins, and that will deal, it says right here, um, for a single instance of incoming damage, it will reflect 50% of that damage back at them. So once it's used, it goes away, and she is impervious, which is nice. And I like using her on a team with um, Ar 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 Artema, Ar Artema. Um, and some other centaurs. Just do a full centaur team in delving for quick delves. But besides that, I, I wouldn't recommend her unless you just need to have one for Divinion Fields, a mythic. So that's it for uh, the troops that you can get. As for weapons, eh, you know... If you've been keeping up with Hellcrag, you probably already have everything. But uh, let me just look through here. Oh, the only one in here? What? Are you kidding? Hold on. Always here, always here, always here. The only one available here is the Aegis of Hellcrag. 75 gems? That's so weird. Uh, remove all brown gems. Again, you don't get anything out of that except to boost your spell and to deny your enemy the brown. Um, 
do, 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 and if the enemies from Hellcrack or if the battles in Hellcrack do double damage. So, you know, it's a cheap weapon so to keep you from getting weapon blocked in Hellcrack. So for that reason, that would be a reason to craft it. But other than that, eh. Now, we do have something else important to go over, and I almost forgot. <sighs> Before you decide to craft anything here, like Shibanu, we need to go over this, the remaining Soul Forge Mythics for this cycle. There are 33 left in the cycle, so if there's anything on this list that you want more than what you're seeing in the in the Soul Forge right now, save your diamonds. Because these are the ones that are going to be coming up in the coming weeks. And you know, Shabanu could be back around the first week of the new cycle, or it may be at the end. So just weigh your options. Use this as a guideline. Thank you so much, King Ollie. You rock! And King Ollie is on the PlayStation Network if you want to join his guild. Um, he has openings, I think. So anyway, that is going to be it for this Soul Forge video, and we'll move on to the world event next. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye!